Said a mouthful there, sir. <laughs> I sure hope he does. <laughs> Listen, uh, the press would like it. We're going to release okay. a photo of you sitting over in that far chair, and I'll be Great. sitting in the next one. We'll look like we're at work. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, besides coming here for uh, his son swearing in, Mr. Wall was here for the Kwanian convention when he spoke yesterday. And you, you, you were. You said you were. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. I tell you, that was a nice, warm reception. The day you can, you can tell the president whatever you want about Jake Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows everything there is to know. <laughs> the the uh, cosmonaut. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, he and I have gone uh, have uh, gone down a lot of roads together back in 1971 when I was in Salt Lake City. And as he said, we were in local government in the trenches. <laughs> well, Share a very strong friend in the Paul White song. Yes. Jake is, of course, been quoted as having referred to him as a brother that he never had. Mm -hmm. Well, we've done Thank it. you. Send you back and make him go to work. Yes, indeed. Poor guy. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Mr. President. Good to see you. It's certainly great to see you, and you're looking wonderful. I feel good. Out of boy. That's great. Who's that sitting in the room there? Good. Good to see you. You're looking great. I feel good. JP Paul, Mr. President. Listen, we'll come in here, but first, they want the picture to be released from the press, and so they thought maybe if you and I were standing on the desk, I'd uh, now, This is a great honor for me. They talking? Yeah. No, shut up. Please, no talking. Wait, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have a few thoughts that I think may be worth your listening to. Okay. Thank you for inviting us. Well, this is that coming. Now, you have the chair there. Yeah. Yeah. Come in. Thank you. In order to uh, make this quick and concise with the program I have a few minutes. I do want to say that we go back to uh, your 1980 campaign and further back what you did in California, and it's absolutely a genius, the idea that it would eliminate waste, fraud, and inefficiency in the government. And I believe, from what I've learned before 1982, February, when you called me, that not everybody was enthusiastic about the idea and you pushed it. And I think it's a terrific idea. And uh, we did come up with 2,478 specific suggestions documented by a million and a half pages of backup to save 424.4 billion over three years, about 143 billion a year. Now I get the official numbers were actually 81 and a half percent were of our recommendations were accepted by you. 71.7 percent of them have already been in place or planned for implementation of the savings in the fiscal year 86 was 31 billion, and in this year it is estimated at 39 billion. Uh, the implement, implementation of reform 1988 uh, in terms of the financial management, debt collection, credit reform, and user fees have made tremendous progress. However, in our view, and who, we, who am I to speak, because I'm just an ordinary Joe Blow businessman, 
The perception is not there. The perception is not there of your leadership to reform the management of the federal government. You have the, the, the greatest leadership. Thank you very much. I'm always interrupting somebody. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that they were saved at all. I'm going to talk. You all know the story, don't you, about the lions in the ancient Colosseum? turned loose on the Christians in the Colosseum and they were roaring and tearing at them and the, one of the Christians stepped forward and said a few words and the lions all laid down. And the crowd was enraged and Nero sent for the man that had spoken to the lions and said, what did you say to them? He said, I just told them that after they ate there'd be speeches. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I just want to thank all of you for being here today for participating in the important nonpartisan program. As you know, the Vote America initiative seeks to educate and motivate more citizens to participate in the democratic process by registering and then by voting. And you as corporate leaders are in a unique position to assist this important national effort. You can get involved by providing one of the greatest public services of all by encouraging the public, especially your customers, to participate in the government by exercising their right to vote, by including the message that young Americans particularly must register and vote into your own advertising campaigns last year. You were, you were able to reach a cross-section of America very quickly and efficiently, a goal no government program could hope to accomplish, and for that I'm grateful. I know that this program is now being expanded to reach out to other large groups of non-voters, especially, as I pointed out, our new citizens and business travelers who must often forget to use an absentee ballot and, as I mentioned before, the young people. Encouraging the private sector to become more involved on in national issue has been a major priority of this administration. I'm proud of the new corporate social responsibility that we're seeing in America. Will Rogers, the late humorist, once wrote in a piece in the paper that people who were elected to public <coughs> office were no better and no worse than the people who elected them, but they were all better than those who didn't vote. So uh, I, I've often wondered about some of the vehement critics of what government does say. <laughs> some asked them, have, well, have you voted? But uh, the message uh, about what you are doing is spreading to other countries, as you know. I know that some of you were involved in the International Conference on Private Sector Initiatives that was held last fall in Paris. And just recently, I saw some of you in Venice uh, at the Italian-American Conference on uh, the Private Sector Initiatives. So I think that what you're doing is make our country better a better place and an example of corporate leadership is a demonstration to others around the world. And I just wanted this opportunity to say thanks to you, and I, uh, I'm not going to say any more except that I understand that if I go up there by the door, I can have a chance to say hello to each one of you, and you know, somebody will take our picture. <laughs> Mr. President, we want to say thank you primarily uh, on behalf of this group. Uh, on behalf of Ambassador Joe Rogers, our chairman, I can tell you. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Mr. President, I have somewhat of a paternal interest in this meeting, having been part of uh, David's group. This the recommendations about a year ago, uh, which I think uh, thanks to David's leadership and the really uh, outstanding membership of the commission were very good recommendations. Captain has been uh, hard at work on implementing them. Uh, they, we all decided it would be a good idea to have David come back and review the situation uh, a year later. 
see how much progress has been made and make a brief report to you. So that's the purpose of this meeting. Take it over to you. Well, thank you very much. Mr. President, I'm going to give you a copy of this letter, but I don't expect you to read it now. I'm going to summarize it for you. Okay. Thank you for reading it. You recall that um, a year ago we gave a report to you and you asked us to come back uh, and give you an uh, assessment of the extent of progress in implementing the recommendation. And of course, a good many of us have followed what's being done during the year. And we spent the last two days here getting extensive briefings from the defense department, from the defense industry, and uh, from some members of Congress. And we have four points to make. And the first one, I'm pleased to report that there's been organizationally a great deal of accomplishment in, in the Department of Defense during, during the past year. And one of the most encouraging things are the developments in relation to military command structure, which we're in.